Hey guys, welcome to another plugin tutorial and today it's on advanced survival games. So this is a fantastic survival games plugin which has a ton of features including tiering chests, uh, the ability to download maps and a really cool spectator system, bounties and much much more. So what we're going to do to begin with is look at the commands, create an arena, have a little go on it and then go into the config files. So to start with, you can actually download a map um, via a command in game, which is really useful. So if you do 4 slash sg download followed by the map name, uh, there's one called Turbulence, which is one we're going to be using. I've already downloaded it. If you hit enter, it will download in about 20 to 30 seconds, and then um, you can uh, use it to play on, which is really cool. So this is what the map looks like. It is an abandoned airport. And it looks really awesome. If we fly over here, there's a runway with broken planes and whatnot. So this is really cool. Really like the design of this map. So let's go ahead and create a brand new arena. So let's fly all the way to spawn. Let's pop ourselves up here. If you do SG, create, followed by the world name, which is Turbulence. So once you've done that, we're going to be teleported to the world and we need to name it something. So you could name it something different or you could in fact keep the same name, which we're going to do. Then we need to set, set the spectator spawn. So uh, for simplicity, I'm gonna set it up here. So SG set spec spawn, there we go. Now we need to set the center of the world, which is going to be here where this chest is. So SG set center, uh, spell the American way. So make sure you spell it ER on the end. And then we need to set the player spawn. So you can set as many as you want. So if we hop on the player spawn, do SG set spawn, like that, and there we go. So you can set as many as you want. You can do set spawn 1 to save spawn point 1, or spawn 2 for spawn 2, and just go around doing however many you really want. So I'm going to put 4 there, like that. And once you've done that, you can actually set deathmatch spawns if you really want to. So you might not want to have a deathmatch in your survival games, but if there's a couple of players at the end, you might want that feature. So set DM spawn to so set uh, DM spawn 1 and DM spawn 2, like that. So once you've done that, you can do SG done. That will teleport you back to the lobby. And then uh, we will be able to have a game. So before that, I want to quickly teleport back to the map and show you a really cool feature, which is SG tier two tool. This will give us a wand. And if we right click these chests, uh, they will be selected as a tier two chest. So I mentioned earlier, there is chest tiering. So obviously tier one might have um, iron or wooden tools and armor and whatnot. And tier two might have diamond armor and uh, golden apples and stuff like that. So it's a really cool feature that you can get that. So here we are in the lobby world, and if you do forward slash SG set lobby, that will set the lobby spawn point. If you look in chat, it says there is one out of 20 people in the game. Uh, it requires two to play, and we can vote for which map we want. So if you right click the voting tool, which is the cookie, uh, you can see all the maps, and if we click turbulence, that's the one we will play as we just set it up. We then have the shop item, uh, which has a super sword uh, which costs 100 points but we don't have uh, enough points to buy it we then have the kit um, button and this has lots of different kits that you could have if you have enough points and finally we have the return back to lobby icon uh, there's a few more commands such as for slash craft this is pretty useful uh, if you get a few sticks and a few diamonds you could create your own sword or weapon um, if you do forward slash list that will show you how many people are living and how many people are watching which is cool and there is a sponsor feature I don't believe it's working at the moment which is for a sponsor um, but if you do that you can select which uh, players to sponsor obviously so um, what we're going to do I'm going to get my other account on and we are going to have a quick game before looking into the config files so let's hop in there right now so here we go the game has started and as you can see, um, because there is only two players left, we have a deathmatch which is going to begin in one minute. 
So if we look in the chests, random items have spawned. A really nice feature is that there is actually boats, which uh, you don't often see in survival games, but it is a really nice feature. As you know, some of these chests will be um, tier two chests as we set them. Um, so I can't remember which ones we set, but uh, there we go, a golden apple, that's very useful. So um, if the deathmatch actually begins, we will be teleported to the two locations we set and uh, hopefully I can kill him in time. I don't really like the new 1.9 PvP, it seems a bit awkward, but um, there we go. So I have won the game and the server will obviously restart. So we're gonna go in the config file now and see all the cool things we can change. So here we are in the advanced survival games folder. As you can see, there are six YML files. So let's start at the top in the arenas.yml. As you can see here, this has all of the locations that we set in game and a couple of other things. So it lists all of the available arenas. You could delete the ones you don't want if you wanted to. And here we have information about the uh, map. So you could credit the author, you could put a link to download or author's page or whatnot, which is a cool feature. But other than that, you don't want to be messing around with any of this. So let's go quickly into the chest file. Now this is pretty cool. Um, so if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see the locations of the tier two chests. So here you can set the tier one chest items and here you can set the tier 2 chest items obviously you can make the tier 2 chests a lot better and further away and maybe difficult places to get to that sort of thing and make sure you enable them uh, and then up here we have the uh, random only chests um, so that is pretty cool then we have the surprises so you can create a surprise item uh, you can change the name of it and all the items that you get so if you were to find the surprise item, which is 138, not sure what that is, but uh, if you got that, place it down, you would get all of these really cool items with various, cool, various enchantments. Up here is a very useful thing, minimum max items in a chest. So seven is quite a lot, so you could get quite a few good items there. I'd, I'd lower that a bit, maybe two minimum and five maximum, something like that. So that's cool that you can set everything to do with a the chest. Then the config file, which is very, very, very big. There is a lot of things you can set in here. So at the top, we have the MySQL database. If you have on those, you can set it up. Obviously, you don't need to. If you don't have it, you just leave it alone. Um, then we have the restart mode. So restart mode zero is on there by default, and uh, that just stops the server at the end. So this was a stop. There is also Restart Mode 2, which allows you to uh, not stop the server once the game is over. Um, you can then change the server name, which uh, I've just messed around with. Min players, so it was only me and my other account, which is why it's 2, but you can obviously set that to whatever you want. Then we have all of the, the time periods, so I set those pretty low uh, for the tutorial, but you can set them to whatever you want. Grace period is very useful, I'd set that to around 30 seconds because players do not like being killed instantly. We then have a cool feature which allows you to give fishing rods and flint and steel extra damage, uh, launch lightning every 4 kills, and um, instant deathmatch at 3 players left, and whether that's enabled or not. If we scroll down a bit more, we can see um, various things to do with fireworks, hub items, and uh, the spectator item, which we didn't get to see, but uh, it is there, and you can choose which player you look at, which is cool. The voting item, which uh, you remember is 357, which is obviously a cookie, and you can change the item name and the lore if you really want to. But uh, uh, it's fine the way it is. Then we have all the sounds. Again, there's no real reason to uh, change this. Make sure you set it to true though, because sounds are cool. But if you wanted to put some weird sound there, like a zombie growl or something, you could. We then have the sponsor settings and the item. So if a player were to uh, buy this, they would get bread or a bow or an axe, but uh, that isn't currently working for me, unfortunately. Reward, so this is very important, so players can get points, which they can then spend on kits and then uh, various items in the shop. Bounty, so you can set a bounty on the player, maybe keeps beating you, um, so this would be pretty cool that you can do that. 
chat settings. This um, allows you to have a different chat system if you don't have Essentials Chat or something similar. And if we scroll down a bit more, we have the world settings. So you can actually allow mobs to spawn and weather to do what it likes, which is kind of cool. And you can allow fire, TNT, and various blocks to be broken and placed, which is very unique. That allows for dynamic gameplay. So you can break 18, which is leaves, and 106, whatever that is. Titles, you didn't get to see that, but it pops up in the middle of your screen. You, you obviously know what a Minecraft title is. Um, so that is pretty cool that it does that. Uh, stats, that is currently disabled, but there is a 4 slash stats command if you enable that. And then at the end we have lobby settings, so I would keep these to true and false false, as you don't want um, animals spawning in your lobby. Next we have the kits file, which is very cool. You saw all the awesome kits, they have different colours, different prices, and various different items. So make sure if you create a new one, you edit everything. Uh, so it doesn't glitch out. I'll show you that quickly. So if we create a new kit, call it kit new, make sure you change the name, make sure you enable it, make sure you change the price and the items. So you could set this to a saw, which is 276. Um, and when a player buys it, it performs this command, which gives the player a permission. So if you don't use PEX, you could set the group manager command or whatnot and you can add more items here. You might be able to add items with an enchantment uh, similar to earlier, so enchant colon uh, all underscore damage. I believe this is sharpness three. Um, I'm not sure why it's called all damage, but I think that could be sharpness three, but don't quote me on that. So that is how you create a new, um, make sure there's a colon there. A new kit, very straightforward. If you scroll up to the top, we have the kit, um, the kit item, which is 399, the name, the lore, and the place it is on your hotbar. You could also set all the kits to free if you wanted to, if you didn't want an economy system with uh, points and whatnot. But I think points are nice, so it makes players maybe play more and try and get the best kit there is. The language file, you don't need to edit this at all, as this has all the different texts and colors. Um, you could in fact change the prefix if you wanted to, but that's the only thing really. And finally the shop. So as you saw there is only one thing in the shop which is the super sword. And then we have the item ID, the name which is um, bold and in cyan I believe, yeah. And it's enabled. So you could add more items if you wanted to. Like this, make sure you change the number to two. You could change the name and the law and the price, obviously use numbers for the price, and then the item as well, so 276, or 176 in fact. So there we go, all seven minutes in the config files. I tried to go through that as quickly as possible, this is like my third time trying to record it because the first two times were quite long, but uh, yeah, there we go, hopefully the total video wasn't too long. Subscribe, like, comment, and I will see you next time.